welcome students as we have already discussed ways of collection of data which were personal interview mailing questionnaire and telephonic interview after that we talked about methods of data collection which was census method and today we are going to focus on sample method sample method is one of the most common method which is being used in researches very commonly because the meaning of this method is it is the method in which data is collected about the sample on a group of items taken from the population for examination and conclusions are drawn on their basis so what is the meaning of sample it is the true representative of the entire population this can become more clear by taking a real life example for example a lady in the kitchen test only a grain or two of the rice to know that whether the rice is boiled or not that means the lady in the kitchen is making use of sample method now what are the suitability criteria of sample method the first criteria is the method is suitable in the area in which size of population is very large because we can find out a sample we can select a sample and uh, conduct a study on it and the second suitability criteria is when more accuracy or precision is not required then sample method is the most suitable one after that what are the merits of sample method the first merit is it is economical why it is economical because in this method instead of including each and every item in the population we are selecting a sample after that we are conducting our study on that particular sample second advantage is it is time saving because we are conducting our study on the sample itself third advantage is identification of the error obviously if we are conducting our study on a small group of people rather than the entire population our errors can be identified very easily and quickly the next advantage is larger investigation sample method is suitable for doing large investigation because by taking a sample or by drawing a sample we can conduct a large study and the last advantage of this method is administrative convenience it is very convenient to use because in this method we are conducting our study on a very few number of the people or very less number of the items available in the population and we know that it is very easy to classify organize present and analyze the data which is in the less quantity as comparison to the more one now demerits of sample method the first demerit is partial because the success of sample method is basically dependent upon selection of an appropriate sample if sample selection is not proper then results can be partial second demerit is wrong conclusions obviously if we have taken any sample which is not representative the entire population then our conclusions would be wrong the third demerit is difficulty in selecting sample it is not an easy task to select a sample from the entire population we face different kinds of difficulties in selecting sample the last demerit is specialized knowledge only the person who is expert in statistics or the person who is having full knowledge of selection of the sample he can pick and select the true representative sample which can truly representative of the entire population after that while talking about sample method we know that the success of the entire study is totally based upon selection of a sample so while selecting a sample there are certain points which have to be kept in our mind before selecting a sample the first one is representative obviously if we are selecting a sample from the population it must be like that that it represents the entire population the second essential quality is independent our selection of sample must not depend on any other factor 
and the third essential quality is homogeneity. Suppose the area of investigation is very large and we need to find out or we need to select a sample out of that, our sample must be taken from the homogeneous population. For example, if we are having a population which is educated or the persons they are graduate. So, the sample will be selected from the graduates differently from the sample which is being selected from the illiterates. The next and the most important essential quality of the sample is adequacy. The size of sample must be like that, it must represent the entire population. For example, if I say that the size of population is 1000 and we are selecting only 10 persons as a sample, our results will not be true because the size of sample must be truly representative of the entire population. So, the size as well as the number of sample selection must be adequate on the basis of entire population. The first method of sample method is random sampling. As the name suggests, random sampling is the one where individual units from the population are selected randomly. It can become more clear by taking a simple example from our real life. If the government of India wants to determine the effect of rise in petrol price on the household budget of a particular locality, then we know that there are 300 families or there are 300 households who are living in that locality and we need to select 30 persons out of them. It can be done like we can write down the name of each and every person living in that society or locality and we will put all these chits in a box. After that, we will pick 30 numbers randomly from that box and these 30 names to be interviewed, they are selected one by one. So, in simple words, what I am trying to explain you that in sample method, each and every person is having equal chance to be selected randomly because we do not know who are the 30 persons which will be selected from the box of 300 chits. This is also known as lottery method. Like in lottery, we are not sure who will win. Similarly, in this method, we are not having surety of anyone to be selected. The same can also be done by using a random number table also. Now, what is the meaning of random number table? It is a kind of table that can be generated to guarantee equal probability of selection of each and every individual unit in the population. And these random number tables are available either in published form or they can be generated by using appropriate software packages. There are certain advantages of using this random sampling. The first advantage is it is free from personal biasness because instructor is not having any personal link or personal biasness towards the respondents. The second advantage is equal chance to be selected. Each and every item in the method has equal probability to be selected. And the third advantage is it is simple and straightforward method which involves random picking or random selection of the sample. After that, we can talk about demerit of random sampling. It is having one most important demerit which is like that it does not give weightage to certain important items in the universe. That is the one of the most important demerit of this method. After that, now we are going to talk about non-random sampling. In this case, you are using your judgment in selecting 10 is the way of selecting 10 out of 100 is not random sampling because we are not selecting our sample randomly. So, what would be the meaning of non-random sampling? It simply means that a method in which all the units of the population do not have an equal chance of being selected. So, and convenience and the judgment of the investigator plays very important role in the selection of sample in the non-random sampling method. 
there are may be uh, selected on the basis of judgment purpose convenience quota these are the criteria which are being included in non random sampling after that we simply know that data can be collected either by census method or by sample method there are two kinds of error which may appear while collection of data these errors are again divided into two parts first one is sampling error and the second one is non sampling error the sampling error as the name suggests it is occurring because there is a difference in the actual value minus estimated value and non sampling error it arises because of negligence lack of knowledge or forgetfulness on the part of informants so these kind of errors can be minimized by increasing the size of sample after that we are going to discuss about census of india and nsso there are some agencies both at national and state level which collect process and tabulate statistical data some of the major agencies at the national level are census of india national sample survey organization that is nsso central statistical organization cso registrar general of india rgi directorate general of commercial intelligence and statistics dgcic and labor bureau etc after that what are the main functions of nsso the functions of nsso are it collects data related to industries as well as crop estimation collection of data on different socio economic conditions like literacy birth rate death rate density sex ratio etc and it coordinates surveys to collect data from agriculture sector it releases collected data on different socio economic subjects through various reports and its quarterly journal which is very popular by the name of sarvekshna after that we need to conclude the entire portion by saying that economic facts expressed in terms of number are called as data the purpose of data collection is to understand explain and analyze a problem as well as the causes behind it primary data is obtained by conducting a survey survey includes various steps which needs to be planned carefully so thanks a lot and i hope you have understood the topic in the meanwhile enjoy reading thank you